first segment. We talk about, we all, man, we talk about a lot. What happened in that LAFC versus Portland game? Did we, we figure it out? Did, we did not figure it out. No, no one figured it out. But though, <laughs> luckily for us, we can talk about it. Also, Infantino says stop snitching or else you get banned. And I'm all about it. <laughs> really? Well, you know, the hypocrisy there. Yeah. And in the second segment, we're going to be talking to Ethan White. Former Ethan ML White. Ethan. Uh, Ethan White. Uh, so happy he's here. Former MLS player. Photographer. The guy's doing everything right now. He's got now. a show online. He's doing <laughs> almost too much, too, really. All right. Leave some, uh, leave some meat <laughs> on the bone for us. That and more on this episode of the Cooligans. Hey, this is Alexi Lawless. There is nobody in U.S. soccer that is more important than the Cooligans. Yeah, baby. What's up, soccer uh, po yeah. podcast fans? Yo! This is a soccer podcast. A comedic soccer podcast. Is it? That's what the title says. <laughs> so now we got to do it. Oh, man. This is uh, this is like a, a, a test I didn't study for. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, oh, I got to be funny throughout this whole thing? Pop quiz, motherfucker. You better make people laugh. <laughs> wow. Teach, you're mad cool. Yeah, are, you, no. are you a substitute teacher? <laughs> also, why you got a gunny on you, teach? <laughs> all right. Yes. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get into. We're going to get into You know what? Thing. I'm realizing the longer we do this, there's more and more callbacks that uh, we have that <laughs> yeah. people don't know what we're talking about. People don't know what there's we're talking about. There's also more and more callbacks that you don't want to be a part <laughs> of this show. Oh, sure. <laughs> I, I, there's more and more podcast uh, callbacks that I have to edit out. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, now everyone's like, wait a minute, what have we missed this whole time? You got to go back to episode one and listen to the other 158 episodes. There you uh, go. To catch up, which some people have actually been doing. Some people have discovered this show fairly recently. And they're going back. And they're, they're going, going back. in the and archives. Yeah, going to the archives and, and calling back jokes that we made a year and a half ago. Well, this happened on the tour. People would walk up to us yeah. and reference something typically that you or I said like eight weeks ago. <laughs> and we're like, what the hell are you talking about? Because <laughs> like, we forget what we say immediately. The, the, the day after. Yeah. Day I listen to the show again. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, they allow that on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> if this was China, we'd be arrested. Uh, <laughs> so welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, this is The Cooligans. We are your favorite stand-up comedians that host your f favorite soccer podcast. It ain't just the funniest soccer podcast. It's the gulliest soccer podcast. I'm doing I'm doing the Lingard right now, too. Gang, gang. <laughs> uh, and now, seems like the soccer world has met us halfway. If you're watching MLS, nothing but bows being thrown. <laughs> and if you follow the official, I guess, governing body of soccer, yo, they on that stop stitching shit right now. On the, the official governing, who is the governing? FIFA. FIFA, okay. Gianni on Fantino, <laughs> like, hey, yo, what happens in this house stays in this house. Stop stitching, my guy, okay. or you get. Okay, yeah, I mean. Sure, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. it. When we speak about it vaguely, it sounds like Gianni Infantino is a mob boss that <laughs> is threatening to kill people that betray him. Uh, when we talk about it officially, it's still going to kind of <laughs> sound like that. Uh, so, uh, yes, welcome to the show. Uh, my name is Christian Polanco. My name is Alexis Guerreros. That's right. So, uh, we, look, last uh, last week was uh, was fun, and and now that we're uh, we're here, we were we were talking a bunch about uh, we had a bunch of bug eater stuff, and so we were. We were back That's from right. the tour. Uh, but while we were away, we also uh, made a stop in Kansas City. We did the Kansas City Improv for the World Cup Comedy Tour. It was a blast. And we also got to hang out at, uh, at Swope Soccer Village. Uh, with with some, uh, well, I guess it was like a mix of Swope Park Rangers players and Academy players yes. uh, for uh, Sporting Kansas City, which was absolutely awesome. Yeah, what a great group of uh, lads, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay. I don't Mr. know what to All say right, here. Mr. England. <laughs> All right. What a those, couple of good blokes. Those chaps out there <laughs> in Kansas City were quite lovely. Cheerio. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, uh, Swole Park Rangers were kind enough to send us a care package of, yeah. uh, of, 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 of kit, scarves. Uh, we, I kept I kept the home kit because it's double XL. You don't want that. So this is your meeting. Sure, it, it would drape the entire yeah. table. <laughs> yeah, it was just too big. It's too big. <laughs> but it's dope. It's blue and black uh, uh, hoops, as yeah. they call them. And uh, so we have the the away kit. And now that I'm looking at it up front, th this away kit from Adidas is the same exact pattern as the King Peach. Ooh. From Atlanta. So okay. We're showing it. We're, I guess we're showing it either a lot of love or a lot of like we're seeing that uh, uh, Adidas is double dipping a little bit. Okay. Adidas is like, yo, you, you thought that was dope? All right, we'll just put your <laughs> stuff on it. 
<laughs> we got zero loyalty, my guy. <laughs> That's right. We Adidas. I do like the logo over here. So the home kit has more of like the badge logo. Yeah. This is just the uh, Salsa Puerto Rico, as I like to call it, the SPR. Okay. <laughs> wow, I never thought of it that way. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty dope. It's nice and orange. And shout so to Tatum. Shout to everyone yeah, out there. Yeah, thank you, Swope Park. Uh, if you don't know who the Swope Park Rangers are, they obviously the, well, you the, been, dog. the USL team for uh, Sporting Kansas City. And, uh, and we had a great time there. Swope Soccer Village very much felt like one of these... Um, uh, like uh, iconic training grounds. It was, yeah. I, I don't know how new it is, but it felt it felt fresh. It felt important to to the community. Very much so. Uh, and and uh, out there in Kansas City, they clearly love their they club they, they clearly love their soccer. Yeah. Well, they love sporting Kansas City. So if you are a sporting Kansas City fan, yo, go out check out Swope Park Rangers, man. It's the stars of the future for you guys. It's your kids. It's some folks trying to make some it. Some of them might in be your league. kids. They might be your children out there. Go, go see your kids play go soccer. Go see your kids. <laughs> what, what are you doing? Look, if you don't, look what happens. <laughs> they, be, they become us. They become us, and you, yeah. you know, and we, uh, and we, I think we influence them in probably a negative way. Yeah. Oh, so this yeah. is not good. You're really not looking after your kids. Check <laughs> out the video we just posted on YouTube <laughs> look, and our Facebook and Instagram and and Twitter. That's right. The, the full video is on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because there's a bunch of videos that are uh, going to be coming from the World Cup comedy tour. But we did. It's uh, us. And Total Soccer Show uh, and Michael Magic. and Mike Magic and, and we gave a little uh, little show, showed them the rope showed them how soccer yeah. is supposed to be played the beautiful game is probably they probably learned a little uh, a thing or two about how to play the beautiful game. I mean, they probably are in a winning streak after you and I just got up there and was like, <laughs> "Let me show you how this is really done in the real world." Exactly. You so, guys are learning like the structured way to do it. <laughs> Let's talk street ball, okay? <laughs> That's right. Okay, so uh, it's a it's a fun video, and uh, I I had fun uh, editing it. Alexis was kind of the one leading the leading the discussion. <laughs> Something <laughs> we're not sure what to call it. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but there's a there's a couple academy kids that are probably going to be doing a, cu a couple unorthodox tactics. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, think going yeah. forward. Uh, <laughs> Let's just say that uh, some Concacaf rules have coming into play. <laughs> okay, they're 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 learning a, a thing or two that you know Vermees might have uh, yeah. skipped over. You miss this when you only look in the books. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> There's a few things you don't get a chance All right, to view. You nerd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get out of the library. <laughs> Let me kiss that neck. <laughs> uh, so please, please check that out. That joke out. will make sense if you watch the video. Exactly. So uh, a bunch of, uh, a couple things. Uh, some some more. Well, we mentioned it last week about some, uh, some really fun uh, reviews that we were getting. Oh, we have so many new listeners. Guys, you got to <laughs> leave us some five-star reviews. On That's iTunes, the best. Look, it's helping us a lot where we put something nice in there we'll read it out we, we, we're uh we we just hit uh over 200 hey. uh, reviews and now we're going we're going for 300 we're and, going for 300 and this was there's a couple ones that were really really fun uh this was uh this was another one i enjoyed uh quite a bit uh so this says it says uh this is from my guy Gunny told me to rate you. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the title, right? Uh, that, uh, and Gunny out here giving information <laughs> to other people. So it says, uh, this is from, yeah, JK, JKL Klemke. J. Klemke, I'm assuming. Uh, and it says, I started, I started out as a TSS liner, uh, listener, but like the gateway drug they are, I found myself listening to Gunny down on, on, <laughs> in Virginia, and he told me that in order to be the gulliest, I had to, to subscribe to this podcast. <laughs> These guys are hilarious, and I look forward to their weekly take on whatever it is they talk about. NYCFC, maybe? I don't know, but they're funny, and I know that Barco is a pimp. Yeah. That's right, dog. <laughs> That's right, baby. <laughs> are you paying attention? You're listening yeah, to what's right? important in this in the American soccer community. I mean, there's so much to talk about American soccer, but no one's talking about the right stuff, and that's us. <laughs> Who else is having these conversations? Nobody. Ain't nobody else calling Barco a pimp. <laughs> Ain't nobody else getting their transfer news from a gun. Pimp, you know? Pimping on a boat. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so uh, thank you again. So make sure you leave a review that, uh, again, is very, very helpful. So uh, we have to talk about uh, let's, uh, should we start serious or should we start fun? What do you think? What do you think? Let's go. Let, let's start serious because then we can always slide to fun. Okay. okay. Plus, we have a great guest today, too. So That's this right. Is exciting. Ethan White's going to be here. It's Ethan be White. It. That's how we pronounce it. <laughs> Ethan. Dude, uh, he's, uh, he's the homie. I'm so happy he's here. So, uh, Snippity snap snap, Ethan. Let's, uh, okay. So let's start with serious and then, uh, then we'll, we'll get wacky and fun later throughout the show. Uh, we have to discuss uh, LAFC. And Portland Timbers played in a U.S. Open Cup match that LAFC won a couple weeks ago. 
Uh, but the the controversy after that game was that uh, Adame Diomande was uh, he had posted on his Instagram that somebody had called him the N word. Somebody called him the N word during gameplay. During the game. So uh, f- we finally have a. Uh, Everybody was mad. Hush. Yeah, this was weird. It was a little uncomfortable. We joked about it, right? We talked about it, right? We joked about it. We talked about <laughs> it in our own way. And okay, and there was only the Cooligans <laughs> brand of discussion. I can't take anything seriously, but this is a situation that warrants that, right? But we joked about it, right? Like we joked. This is why we joked about because we we didn't know exactly what happened, and there there was a lot of speculation. And the thing that Diamandi's not from here. The, he is from Norway. Norway. So what we had heard was that a it was possibly a black player that said it to him. So that's what that's where the joke was. We right. were just like, well, well come on, let's, come on. We were just like, whatever. What you I mean, you should deal? adapt them, not <laughs> put a post exactly. up. So, but uh, here's the thing: I don't believe that that's the case anymore because yes. they did an investigation. And I put that in bunny quotes, bunny ear quotes. Uh, He's an investigation, and it turns out nobody said anything. Okay, so no, so that's... As per the official... As per... This was... So the Timbers put out a response first. This right here? It's not good. That's the sound I'm going to (laughs) make. I don't know. I don't know. It's... uh, Yeah, I would say that this is not a... This is not the best way to handle somebody making this claim. So the the, the statement basically said, "Nah, son, didn't happen. I don't know what you talking happened. about. Who you? Who? What game? What yeah. game? I didn't even play. We weren't even there. Yo, you was up a cup. That, <laughs> it died ten years ago. We never, so okay. I mean, look, why uh, would you even out there? <laughs> so look, that's. Ba- I mean, that, that's not what it said, but no, that's basically. I mean, paraphrasing it ain't that far. That's basically what it said, and uh, it does bring up a lot of issues because clearly, whenever culturally. Yes. I'm, yeah, this is like a very what I don't I mean, whether they realize it or not this is like a a sort of like oh but what were you wearing, you know? It's like it didn't really happen. Maybe this is just something, you know, it's like well, that kind of thing. <laughs> Basically, I don't want to say it's victim shaming because it's not specifically, but it's almost like oh, it's okay, nothing really happened. It's being dismissive only yeah. of the, and this is what is the main issue is uh, Diamanda even says it, and he posted another Instagram uh, 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 post about it and said, like, b- basically, it, it's just me and, and you that know that it happened. So, right. so he's clearly speaking to the person who did it. Uh, again, I hate speculating of who did it because I don't know. Yeah, no, I don't want to put this on anybody. Yeah. But so, I got to say, like, that's not a very – he didn't – Make he didn't say it after the game, like to, to the cameras. He didn't say it to the ref. Diamante came out and said it to his fans on Instagram. I doubt that there Sorry, was any. Before you finish, I don't know if he said it to any ref or. Anybody. But what I'm saying is, we don't yeah. know. We, we don't know. We, we don't, don't know. know. For, as far as I'm concerned, he came out and said it specifically to his fans. It seems to me like those are the actions of someone being truthful. Those are the actions of someone. There's nothing. I don't know that what he gains There's, exactly by saying. Yo, but this guy called me the N-word. Like, it's not like they lost the game and he was, like, the GOAT, you know, and everyone's, yeah. like, mad at him. Like, there's no reason for him to make that up. To do an investigation and to find out, the only thing I can think of is whoever said it maybe reached out to him and was like, hey, I'm going to act like this didn't happen because they don't know how to handle this shit. No, I don't, I, I don't doubt it, don't but think, that's literally the only thing I could come up with in my mind as to why you would come out and be like, why, now we good. So how, how about this? Why doesn't he say who said it? Why do you think? I don't know. He's it kind of classy to not say who said it. It's so it's look. So he doesn't gain anything. I mean, it it's only going to make him look bad. Really? If he said something, he'd get banned from FIFA. We'll talk about it. Later. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he doesn't. There's nothing. I don't know how to explain it. Like he, it, it, it's he's being it, it's, it's it's an adult by not saying who it is. He's saying, "All right, you know who it is, I, and I know who it is. I just, we'll handle I'm it." I'm not on blaming him for not saying well, not, what, not saying who it what is. What do you get by putting him on blast now? Either you say it in the beginning, or you don't say it at all. I agree with that. I think is if it's if although it, as a fan, I'd want him to go. It was him. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, hey, now we can talk about it. There's three hour episode right there. I it, it is a uh, look. There's there's a lot of parallels with like uh, you know with women and. In, in, in the Harvey Weinstein and 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 believing women and there's parallels there and about how when women 
uh, make that claim, then people go after them, right? Or, or they're always there. There's always a reason to be like, but did it really to minimize what they're what they're saying and the impact of what they're saying? Look, I've we've said it on this podcast. If another black dude called him the N word, like that's up to you to decide. Totally. Both of them, if that's cool or not. It culturally in this country, it's not a big deal. I can't imagine, and this is the part that frustrates me the most, I can't imagine the fan base in Portland being cool with this. It's one of the most progressive cities we have in this country. Yeah. Um, I never got the sense that anybody in Portland was. We were there while uh, no, no the, one's cool the weekend that happened. There wasn't any anyone that we encountered that was yeah. like, yeah, who cares, or, they, or was dismissive of it. If I think a white I, player would have said this, I feel like the Portland squad would find a way to get that. You mean like out. if, if a, a white player was called the N-word? I guess mm. that's... Then we're like in I a mean, bunch of weird levels. Just a big smile <laughs> on that guy. He's like, oh, finally. Oh, okay, we're friends? Finally. All right. <laughs> He's like, I've been waiting. I've been listening to hip-hop for a long time. Uh, no, I said if a white player on Portland said this word, we have to imagine that the team... Would do something. I don't know. Maybe, My, uh, maybe look, we'll ask Ethan because, like, he's a professional player. What would happen in yeah. the locker room if a white player called a black player that? Like, let's be honest. We mentioned the Barco thing. Just pictures like he's all chummy, chummy with everybody all of a sudden, Barco. <laughs> and everyone's like, yo, be cool with him because he might bang your girl. You know what I mean? You don't want him to steal your girl next. But everyone's mad cool with him. If I was on that team, I would not be chummy chummy with the dude banging I, other people's girls. All right, but I think you're 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 getting lost in like that Instagram. No, uh, no, 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 uh, I'm not. Like you it's a you're like a little family. When you do something to offend or to harm the rest of the players, you, as you a, don't kick them out of the family. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you do. <laughs> okay, I don't know what kind of family you that, were raised in. I've been excommunicated, <laughs> so I don't have a family. I mean, you work through your problems. I mean, look, this is just... I don't think a white player calling a black dude the N-word on the field is something that you can necessarily work through. That's There's a punishment attached to that. I agree. So, so Like, can you beat him down in the that, shower? Then it's... Look, this That's is... That's a real question. The, the, the onus was put on the, on the player... Or or the team to find out what happened and and the, I I think Diamande's hope was that this this person would come out and say hey I'm sorry I said it but did not he did not that did no not happen came out, no one, no one came anything. out and said anything no one said anything about anything exactly this is actually there's a, I would uh, even there's say. a green wall of silence <laughs> yeah, yeah. Out, out in Portland there's an astroturf <laughs> wall of silence uh, I actually believe. And also, for as loud as their goddamn owner is on the internet, nothing. He bitching about calls left and right. Nothing on this. <laughs> you can't say a word to your fan base. Look, this, How about your this, black fans? This was their response. This was their response. That didn't, yeah, we believe we believe what they thought, what they found. Well, no. Well, it, it, I, look, I don't know who was exactly in charge of the investigation. I, I I've heard that it was. Uh, so it was from. Uh, the U.S. Open Cup adjudication and discipline panel, right? And which we can only imagine. So, is what volunteers. is the investigation? What going up to people, being like, "Hey, did you say the N-word?" Everybody says no, and then it's like, "Okay, well, we're done here." I mean, we looked and we didn't <laughs> find anything. So, look, it, it is a it, it's a weird place, right? Because how how is Diamandi supposed to prove that this happened? And, uh, we can believe him. Does Diamandi even know who it was? Maybe it was like a group of players that he was walking past or, or next to, and he didn't know who it was because. Wouldn't part of the investigation it, be it, to ask him? It sounds like he... That'd be my first question. Be like, <laughs> hey, who said it? Who said it? <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm part of the uh, <laughs> I'm part of the U.S. Open Cup adjudication. So it, it, it's it's a it's unfortunate. It's uh, I I think this is look this is the unfortunate is like the lightest way to put it. I know what you're trying to get. I'm at. Say, the, the the fact the investigation the way how things are handled the the how to move forward that that's what is unfortunate because we don't th there's a difference between. Be going, you know, to some game in Italy where we the cameras on the fans and we see people throwing banana peels at right. players during a corner kick, and we can clearly see who did it, right? And and, and we who's know responsible. The, we know like the group that they're a part of. You know those things. Yes, this is a player. This is a play. Uh, this is a a, a a a player's quarrel, right? And it's remember, remember, um, this happened maybe four or five years ago. You might not remember this. There was a player in some European league who called a player on the other team the N-word. The next time they met up, that player was getting kicked in the nuts, yeah. in the legs, in the head, everything. There is a certain justice that it should be provided. I Look, I'm not, maybe I am. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to yeah, be- Yeah, just say, what you, say how you feel. Yeah, right, but like, I'm, I'm typically the guy who's like, this kind of stuff needs to be self-policed. Like a comedian stealing from another comic. That's some shit we handle on our own. This as a player, I, look, 
I don't know what's happening. And the problem is, is that we don't even have like a ghost of an idea of what happened. But like if somebody said this and they're not willing to handle it, this is on you, Portland. This is on you, LAFC. Go handle your business. Yeah, I mean, that that's really the, uh, I mean, it's... A it's, message needs to be said that that's not okay. It, this country shouldn't have, we have an issue with racism everywhere else. We shouldn't have it in soccer. We've tried, Yeah, they've tried forever, and that's one thing that you could give MLS credit for left and right up until this moment. And I know this isn't an MLS issue per se because it's open cup, but MLS is involved because their teams are involved. They've busted their ass to make sure that there's no racism. They've stopped it whenever they've seen it in the stands. They've done the don't cross the line stuff. They've stopped the misogyny. They've been able to, or, or try. They've been able to stop the, you know, hatred of LGBTQ. Uh, they had an open player playing that, that they supported fully. This is the kind of stuff that should be happening in American soccer. This thing, I would have preferred if nothing, no message ever came out. If no, we didn't hear about an investigation. If this was something that was just handled behind closed doors. Because this, this is bullshit. That's not enough. And look, if it was, even if it was the lightest of situations where it was another black player saying it to him, and like, dog, you don't understand our culture. That's a good thing here. And blah, 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 blah. And then maybe Diamandi's like, I, right, maybe I over, maybe I, you know, what's the word I'm looking overreacted. for? Overreacted, right? Maybe I overreacted and maybe this was not cool, but I'm still uncomfortable with it. And that's something they handle on their own. That's something maybe we shouldn't have been made privy to. This, this makes your league look like dog shit. This makes us look like a joke. And it makes it look like Diamandi's not welcome here. Yeah, that's that's well put. Yeah, it, it is a uh, j just saying that we we didn't see it. You know, yeah. there's no proof. Hey, I looked and I couldn't find anything. Yeah, that's just, not doesn't handle it well. Yo, put put signs up on polls. Uh, no any information. It, it, Two hundred dollars more. Anything. It, it, just, more it, than it that. implies that from the Portland camp, it just implies that. We don't believe the Amande. That's exactly what it sounds yeah, yeah. like, and that, and that's that's the the wrong way to handle it. Even at the very least, it's like you can say, uh, uh, you know, yeah, we can't really we we have we haven't seen any proof to corroborate it, but there's no reason to not believe the player, and we will be uh, talking to our players about how to handle, uh, yeah. you know, th themselves on the field, and that's it. And there's like. There's not more. There's the not players, more you can do. Or the players have communicated with each other. It's a misunderstanding. Whatever the situation is, you know those n-word misunderstandings. Yeah, there's so many of them. You know, like, you know, like when you write it on a sign and hold it up <laughs> to our last president. <laughs> misunderstanding. Not, okay. Right? I mean, look at look at my point of view yeah. and this little mix-up. I had no idea. <laughs> right? Look, it's in lowercase. <laughs> it's not that angry. <laughs> misunderstanding, right, Trump voters? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> here's here's my point. At the end of the day, Diamandi is not happy with uh, with this result. And if you're a person who cares about people at all, you shouldn't be either. And frankly, if you're a player on Portland, you probably can't say anything. But that, that sh you shouldn't be happy with it either. Exactly. All right. So I'm glad we sorted that out. Now um, let's talk about the realness. <laughs> let's get to the OG, the new the 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 new G. <laughs> Let's, uh, so FIFA. FIFA's in the news. Oh, Gianni Infantino. All right. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the G stands for gang, gang, gang. Gang, gang, gang. Uh, <laughs> Gianni gang, 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 Infantino. Uh, uh, so uh, this was uh, reported uh, in, the, in the AP News, uh, the Associated Press, and uh, it comes out that... Uh, Basically, the, the, the headline... Secret meetings. Already love it. <laughs> so basically, the, this is the headline of the article. It says, uh, keep bribes quiet for 10 years and FIFA won't punish you. Hey, all right. Good. I, you know, good system. Got 10 years to get what you can get, <laughs> bro. <laughs> so, all right. That's a decade <laughs> to stack that guap. It's done. I mean, you got, you got 10 years to make some money. Get out right. there and do it. You know nobody snitching? <laughs> Use that time wisely, uh, sir. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, basically, uh, th this was the, the, the kind of one line from it. It says, soccer officials and players who bother checking out the new code of ethics uh, governing their conduct uh, will find the word corruption, quote unquote, corruption missing. They will also discover <laughs> how to avoid being banned for paying and receiving bribes. So... Uh, it says corruption was scrubbed as an official misdemeanor during secret meetings where executives executed the first overhaul of, of the code since a wave of scandals left soccer's governing body, quote unquote, clinically dead by 2015. That was hyperbole used by Johnny Infantino during a speech at the World Cup in June, boasting of his own apparent achievements cleaning up FIFA. So essentially, this what, is how you handle it. What, what they've changed is uh, that uh, if you 
speak negatively about FIFA, you out, son. You will be. Uh, there's a possibility that you will be banned uh, from any soccer activities for up to two years. So I'm all about this. Okay. Um, Look, I don't know why you're all. About <laughs> this is. Can I be a part of FIFA? We need, we need whistleblowers, right? If there's somebody nah, doing something son, bad, what you need to do is stop snitching. You don't tell on the family. The exact opposite of what I want Portland to do. Real, I, lo- I love the consistency throughout the same podcast. You knew exactly where I was going with this. If you listen to the show, shouts to Gianni and Fantino. You run in this thing like a gang, okay? Like a like a like. You say you're not an organized crime unit, and yet you literally broke the rules to sound exactly like an organized crime unit. Yeah. I mean, I think when Alexis sees any like New Jersey. Ethics throughout any, uh, any specifically Newark, like Newark, <laughs> Newark based rules. I'm all about it. Yo. Okay, I can I can understand these. I can work with these. Here's the problem I have. I would not do anything different if I were running this. This is why I'm so happy I met my wife. She has made me into a human being. If I if I never met my wife and I somehow made it into FIFA, and you know I would have. <laughs> This is the exact same shit. I would have raised my hand in the Just first meeting. Chuck, I got an idea. Ch- Chuck Blazer's assistant yeah, over yeah. here. I also got a rascal scooter for no reason. <laughs> I got an apartment for pit bulls instead of cats. Because you know how we do, right? I would have legitimately raised my hand and be like, hey. Why don't we just kick the people out who snitching? And they would have been like, great rule, Alexis. <laughs> this is why we brought you in. It's okay. Uh, uh, all those in favor, say <laughs> aye. <laughs> Everybody, you know, from them small countries is like, aye. We're trying to get that guap. Uh, if you agree, again, please raise your gun in the air. And then we all raise our guns <laughs> in the air. And it's I, honestly, this is exactly what an un- like, a, like, I guess just an unmonitored organization with an incredible amount of power does. Yeah. They, this is it. They added this. So, essentially, they added uh, an ethics code for defamation. So They're not even. Now, but but that, defamation means you have to lie. So, if I say uh, Christian uh, is a bad soccer player, right? Lies. Right. Clear lies. <laughs> uh, but. In order for you to say, yo, that's defamation, you have to prove me wrong. Oh, well, that's an opinion. That's no, a- no, no, no. Like, if you, if you claim, that's defamation. Yeah, yeah. You're claiming, I know for a fact that he's a bad soccer player. If I can say, right now, Gianni Infantino has, has accepted bribes in the past, I can say that because in order for that to be defamation, he now has to go, well, now I got to prove I never did. And he can't just be like, he can't use the U.S. Open Cup uh, investigation <laughs> committee and be like, look, they asked me. I said no. So therefore. So investigation over, all right? <laughs> now you're infringing on my rights <laughs> by asking me repeatedly. Yeah. And now I have to pay them, <laughs> even though they're interns, their fee of mostly just kind bars and water, which is what they work for over at U.S. Open Cup. <laughs> what, <laughs> what, in order to prove defamation, you have to prove that the statement is false. False. You know, I'm not a legal expert, but I'm also going to be, I'm pretty certain you're not a legal expert. Uh, well. Not only am I right, <laughs> but that's also mentioned in the article. Okay. So I'm not just stating this because I studied law. Okay. All right. So it, it is. So you have to, like, if someone says, like, yo, they're accepting bribes, they can't just be like, all right, you're kicked out. You, you defame them by saying that, but in order but, to prove defamation. But, but isn't defamation more for, I, mean, I could be wrong about this, but to defame a person, not, a, not an organization or a company? No, you can, you can defame, you can defame, you a, can defame the, the leadership of an organization by defaming the organization's tactics or, or what they've done. It's just, it's just strange when we know on you record. You can't just say FIFA is corrupt. That's just a, that's an opinion. that you, can't, you can prove the leadership of FIFA is corrupt. Uh, the heads of FIFA have accepted bribes. Uh, it's, a, it's a slippery slope, right? That's really not. It, it's a very standard. <laughs> because if, if we're, anyone knows if about we're defamation, criticizing, who's it going to be? If, if we're criticizing Infantino, are we therefore criticizing FIFA? You know? I don't think this matters. I think this is your, yeah. I mean, all right. I don't know. It just you're seems, muddying the water it's, here. It just seems like after this, you're doing a real OJ in it's legal It's just like team a thing. bunch of people were arrested, right? Uh, yeah. A, a couple years ago. Yeah. Uh, and with and proof. With proof. Some and, of them people died. Some of the people are out. We know exactly what they did. And then you add this rule like, hey, all right, everybody. Don't say anything ever again, yeah. because we <laughs> look, what happened. look what happened. <laughs> that was that's on you. We bro. lost some good soldiers because y'all can't keep your mouths shut. <laughs> so that's all I'm saying. Uh, it's like so funny that like you didn't learn to just not do illegal shit. You couldn't. You can't be like let's no. add another illegal shit, which is you telling people about all the illegal <laughs> shit we do. So that's it. Okay. No okay. more. 
That's why you, that's how you get everybody in line. Clearly. Also, do you know that Infantino said, "Don't worry, corruption is dead." We took care of it. <laughs> Just don't look behind that curtain. That's right. It's all. It, it, I mean, it's it's very tr uh, Trumpian, right? Just fake very news this so. and whatever. Ignore all this, all the haters. If I could run the FA of any country, it would be some small country with no chance <laughs> or possible infrastructure of ever getting a World Cup <laughs> or ever making it to a World Cup, and I would be selling my vote left and right. I'd be lying to one dude. I'd be like, yo, you got my vote for the 50K. I would say, go to the other one. Qatar, baby, thanks for the Rolex watches. You got my vote. And then i go to France and be like, yo, you know I'm not voting for Qatar, no? <laughs> wow, but just play everyone against each other. Also, can you get rid of the metal detectors? I'm wearing 38 Rolex watches Jeez. right now. All right, Paul Manafort. <laughs> yeah. so, don't They're, die. <laughs> <laughs> They're in my ostrich leather coat, <laughs> which I pay for quite legally, so don't ask. <laughs> no, I don't have receipts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, uh, let's let's move on. So let's let, let's get towards the fun stuff and and uh, outside of corruption and racism, right? Yeah. Uh, oh boy. Uh, we have to talk about the game of all games because DC United played against the uh, the, uh, the Orlando City Miracles, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, What's the opposite of a miracle? <laughs> no, well, if Orlando City plays in a game, there will be a miracle. There, a miracle will happen. It will be against them. It will be against them. <laughs> yeah. They are the, the Orlando City calamities. <laughs> Just when you think <laughs> they got it under control. <laughs> and I really thought they did. And I was watching, I saw this entire game and I'm like, you know what? The, impressive, especially being down a man and still being able to to tie it. I was genuinely impressed, and and, and I saw a lot of heart coming from Orlando. And but what a happened? A little bit to, more heart. A little bit more heart from from a very old heart. I also, how you let a guy who's five three get a header in the last minute? I mean, a lot of issues. But look, obviously, if you did not see this game, DC United against Orlando you, City. I, by the way, people who don't like soccer. Saw this highlight. Yeah. Of this game. I mean, everyone. A lot of people saw the highlight, but a lot of people didn't see the game. It's, you know, it's just like another thing. Uh, you know, some people need to just... Get, it's, it was on uh, Fox, uh, Fox Sports 1 on ESPN. Oh, yeah, it was on ESP, uh, Fox Sports, right? Because uh, Alexi Lawless and yeah. JP Della Camera were covering it. Uh, there's, the, the, like, w at least one game a week. Sit, sit back at home. Just catch a game at night. There's always one game on a weekend. Just put it on in the background. This was a great... If you're, if you're a bartender at a bar and no one's watching the TV, just throw on the soccer it game. On. It, it was a great game from beginning yeah. to end. It was, it was very open. Which is the one thing. Look, we get a lot of uh, shit from Orlando City fans for talking. So, I mean, everyone's doing it. You know, welcome. Sorry, uh, to, but pile, are, sorry to pile on. Yeah, so my, our bad. Uh, <laughs> But they are exciting to watch. <laughs> the reason they're exciting the to watch <laughs> isn't just because they're completely going to shit the bed before the... I, I mean, once the 70th minute hit, they forget how to play soccer. <laughs> but other than that, they are exciting to watch. They're just like, look, we got no defense, so let's just bombard them. Honestly, it's more fun than watching like, uh, you know, new, uh, like a lower league, a lower... Uh, table yes. Premier League team 100% uh, cuz at least like the mistakes add to like some of the drama yeah uh and and what honestly what I love and I, I feel bad for loving it so much but the, the Orlando City social media after a loss is a I mean it is a treasure trove <laughs> It is a wasteland yeah, yeah. Of just of takes and anger. And it is, you know, those post-apocalyptic movies <laughs> where the character wakes up and realizes Dude. they're there? That's hitting the OCSC uh, it is, hashtag. It is 28 days later. Just <laughs> yes. <laughs> where am I? Sandra where? Bullock was terrible There's in that film. Dead no, bodies everywhere. <laughs> uh, it was... It's it's Walking Dead. It really is. Yes. And the fans are just some fans believe that there's a conspiracy theory <laughs> by the league. There was someone I don't even. Someone's like y'all must start stitching on hookers. Yes. Do yes. you see that? That was uh, I, I think it was one of the supporters. But I don't I don't remember exactly which one. But and they they had a Don Garber with a Hitler mustache. It was so that's way how too you, much. That is how you know MLS has made it yeah. <laughs> into the social fabric of this country. We're calling people Hitler? Yeah. it's And also, they took the MLS logo and just threw a bunch of SS stuff in it. <laughs> they, they gave him the hat. Ridiculous. Look, we're not okay with that. We that's, just talked that's about cool. Gianni Infantino, all the corruption, yeah. telling everybody to shut up. But Garber's the problem. Yeah, Garber's <laughs> the issue. Garber's the reason Orlando is not winning games. I mean, look, if you live in Columbus, I get your gripe with the league. <laughs> Yo, if you live in Orlando, dog, relax. <laughs> yeah, just this look, is too much. It's just, yeah, tone it down. It's just, it's just, look, they think that the, the that the refs have something out against them. And might I add, you know, the investigation that they did into the N-word, you could have just said it was
was that guy. And everyone would have believed <laughs> just play it. Play that guy, yeah. Yeah, just play him. <laughs> so, uh, this game uh, just was insane. And obviously, the, 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 the epic moment was at the end when the game is tied at 2 2. And we know where DC United is in the standings. And a lot of people had an issue with this that Ben Olsen, uh, you know, uh, how does he still have a job, Ben Olsen? Uh, he... They are in last place. They're, they're in, the in, in the East. They're not in last place overall. No. But they are... No, San Jose, comfortably. They're nine points away from a playoff spot, which... But they have a ton of games they, in hand. They have, like, I, they, I believe 11 of the next uh, 14 games are at home. This is, this is the last games left, so they, have, they only have about 14... They're about three to four games in hand because they've only played 20, whereas most people have played so they, play 23 so or they 25. Have 18, they have 18 games, uh, eight, uh, 14 games in hand. Uh, 14 games to play. Total. Sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah, 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 total. 14, 14 games in hand. hand. Like, they well. haven't started the season yet. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, so th- this was strange in that the, the guy, the game was tied at two, two and, and Ben Olsen told, uh, uh, Dave Usted to go to, uh, to, 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 they, they're up a man. Yeah. And they send at, the keeper, send the keeper for the corner. And wh- as soon as I saw it, I'm like, well, this is a little risky. And yeah, but they, but they need three points. They need three points, but it, it one point's not enough for them right now, but it, it's also not, uh, you know, Game seven of the Stanley Cup Finals, no, right? It's not common, but at, yo, Ben Olsen gets it though. A point's not going to help you. I'd rather lose than not try everything to win. Fair. It's still looked odd, right? It's just people visually are not used to seeing right. it, and a lot of people. This point in the season, especially in Europe, there's been there were because uh, because the 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 final clip of Wayne Rooney making that pass and the and the tackle and everything uh, w- went viral, and a lot of people in Europe were like, "Why is why is the keeper up when it's two uh, two? They're not they're not going to get relegated. What are they doing? Uh, uh, they're trying to make them damn playoffs. And they're trying to make the playoffs, and that's like, uh, hey, don't tell me I don't know about playoffs. <laughs> and it is one of those things that gets like lost in translation. They can't understand why we care about winning a game. Yeah. They just cannot believe it. Yeah. And uh, listen, <laughs> Europeans, sometimes there's more exciting games at this point in our season than there is in yours. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Deal with it. So, uh, deal with it. Glasses come down. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, a little blunt. <laughs> Yes, so Wayne Rooney. So let's uh, kind of break down the play a little bit, right? While uh, you do that, I'm going to look at Orlando's form because this is rough. For, what is what is their form? Is what bulbous? Uh, <laughs> just, just not not in shape. One game, one win in the last fifteen games. Man, can't even. I don't even remember the win to be honest. I don't know who they beat. Oh God, their last win came on May sixth against RSL. Oh, yeah. No, you're wrong. <laughs> they win right there. July 14th against Toronto. Damn, Toronto. They beat Toronto. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I do remember that vaguely. I, yeah. I was like, how? I, I just couldn't believe that Toronto lost to a team that is uh, mm. above them in the standings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What a shock. <laughs> they also did draw August 4th against New England. 3-3. They're, they're not great. But they're not great. The last. Let's talk about the last play because there's a lot of people. There's a lot of things that happen. The uh, obviously the cr- the the corner is taken. Uh, it is cleared by a by a Orlando City player right uh, by the post. I think uh, so I think Will Will Johnson, right? Uh, yes. The dude, he's got one L in his name. That's right. Will <laughs> the Will uh, Will Johnson does get the ball, and he tried this like little. I guess I would say cheeky, right? He tried this cheeky move, like he was like, oh. Fucking, hey, it's look, Wayne, Ro- Wayne Rooney. Also, this gunning towards me, so head just, down. Again, there's no, there's no keeper. No keeper. Only Wayne Rooney is back. He's at the midway point. By the way, other Orlando players, yes, jetting towards <laughs> towards the goal. Because there's an open net and three points are oh, awaiting yeah. Orlando. City. Orlando, who by the way we just <laughs> referenced, barely sees three points <laughs> for months. Uh, instead of just <laughs> chipping over. Wayne Rooney as he's coming at him, or before he gets there, just tapping it to the center of the of the pitch and letting one of the uh, other eleven Very Orlando players fast running. Orlando City players. By the way, open goal. Nothing stops them. They literally could have walked this in. They could have had a conversation in front of the goal. Hey, which one of you wants to go right now? <laughs> and they would have been well, fine. Okay, well, I get it. There's a bonus if I get five goals this season. And might like- I add, the only player that's able to stop them is a very old, very gassed <laughs> Wayne Rooney. But Wait. instead of that. What Will Johnson does is try to do that thing you do to the keeper where you just poke it past them as he slides, and then you run around the sliding keeper and you sort of keep going. He tries some, tries some cool shit, some slick shit, and look what happens. <laughs> okay. so, uh, be- Wayne Rooney, 
Stop. We're, we're calling Wayne Rooney very old. Wayne Rooney is only 32 years old. The way he plays. The way he plays. He just, he just, his body has aged more than he has. Yes. I you mean, know? he looks a very old man. And he's, and he's been playing for easily 20, what, professional wise, 14 maybe? Uh, no, 16. He made his debut, debut for Everton. Okay, okay. Yeah. So he's been playing a long, long time. Yeah. A lot of miles. A lot of or, World Cups. A lot, lot, lot of Euros. Of kilometers on that body, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. He's, he's on those legs. So... The that was kind of the big surprise, right? When Will Johnson gets the ball, yeah, he, you can watch watch Wayne Rooney. He puts his head down. He's like, ah, I got to do this. Uh, yeah, he was, and, and th- there there is this weird debate online of like people are like, man, how gutsy of Wayne Rooney, still still giving it his all, and it's like six milli. <laughs> yeah, you're getting paid a lot of money. My so, God, you better sweat some of them not- uh, <laughs> some of them hair plugs out. <laughs> <laughs> We're not necessarily just happy because he tried his best. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you, Wayne Rooney, for giving us a highlight. <laughs> no, it, it it is the the I, I think the way it, it played out because uh, Lucho Lucho Costa did mention Lucho was going to run back and Wayne was like, no, 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 I got exactly. it. So, Which so, is like Lucho's like. There's a sure? great. It, uh, there's a bunch of people that were at the game. Uh, Pablo Mora was one of them who who was covering the game and he had inter- I think he interviewed Lucho Costa and that was one of the things that he said that Lucho was like uh, he, Wayne Rooney. Uh, that they're they're having they have this qu- new friendship. They both they don't speak the same language. No, they don't. They can't communicate <laughs> with each other at all. And I know Wayne Rooney don't know Spanish. <laughs> Very. Yeah, we can. I am certain of that. Right. Yeah. His face is too red. Yeah. To, no. <laughs> to know. The only reason he might know is because he did the whole stag parties in in, in Spain <laughs> in Ibiza. So, uh, but he did tell Wayne Rooney said like, "Yo, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay back. Everybody else stay up front." So that already is like a. You gonna do what? Wayne, do you know how, how long you've been playing? You know how old you are? I thought you would. I, I, I mean, I know this isn't a retirement league, but yeah, like, yeah. I mean, like, people say that for a reason. How about you take it easy? <laughs> take you know? it easy out there. That's like if we go camping and I'm like, why don't you guys relax? I'll go build the tent. You don't be like, <laughs> He's going to kill us, right? <laughs> this, is, this doesn't sound right. This tent's not going to be put up correctly at all. So, uh, and, and that was kind of the, the thing that was most surprising to me that Wayne Rooney was like, I'll, I'll stay back. Uh, yeah. And he's I'll a, cover. Yes. And, and, and he had to. And he, had, and he did. And he did exactly that. Will Johnson gets the ball. He's by the touchline. And, and there is a moment that, that you, when you freeze frame it, I've seen it, uh, this a bunch on Twitter, and he, he had the opportunity to pass the ball. He just, he, oh, he, multiple. He, he did. He didn't. He, he didn't it, it's one of those things where you're, you're so open that you think that there's nine defenders covering you. You know what he thought? He thought about the highlight reel. Because <laughs> you could see, like, he looks over and he sees Wayne Rooney coming at him, and he speeds up. And he realizes, oh, I got the ball. Let me go as wide as possible. Your first instinct would be, oh, he's going wide to pass it. Yeah. Just put it in the space is all he needed it's to do. <laughs> it was a bad, a very bad decision from Will Johnson. And let me say, him stopping that run of play, like, you know, Wayne Rooney getting in there, already a highlight. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible moment, saving a point. But he's like, nah, son, <laughs> there's another chapter to this story. He gets up, gets the ball. Will Johnson's like, damn. You see him get up like, come on. Oh, this guy's so old. Oh, <laughs> damn. I okay. didn't see that. You saw Will Johnson did do that like, really? Yeah. Wayne? Really, you? And he gets up to chase, eight, and eight, he realizes. A2, Rooney? <laughs> <laughs> he gets up to chase Rooney, and he realizes, I'm done. I'm gassed. How is he still going, right? So there's another Orlando City player that's making his way to Wayne Rooney. And really, in the last second, Wayne Rooney kind of looks up, sees where everyone is, and he pinpoints the shortest player, the tiny, I don't on the field. Honestly, I don't know how we saw him from that far away. Yeah, it was he's five <laughs> three. I'm sure he was like, "Who is that full kid child out there?" <laughs> There's a ball kid, but that's around. apparently his favorite. Uh, yeah, player yeah. now. And Lucha Casa gets uh, after that damn forty yard diagonal cross. Uh, Lucha Costa goes over Chris Mueller to get. Uh, to head the ball over uh, like another what six foot three Joe Bendick, yeah. yo Cash Mueller, right? Cash Money Mueller, Cash Money Mueller, more <laughs> like Chump Change Mueller right now, dog. <laughs> How did a five three play? And I know he's well, he's running backwards, which isn't easy to do. Yes, and also there is uh, the question of was he offside, but was not. They looked at it, they VAR'd it. It wasn't clear. I I think I think he was he, not. I think he was offside. He I think was he, not. yeah. I mean, I don't know. It looked uh, it, again. I see a five foot three guy go over, uh, uh, get a ball, and head the ball over a, a taller. Your defender. first instinct is, yeah, that guy's offside. He's probably offside. I, look, I think. Look, whatever the moment was better. If, if, if there, there's no way, if, look, if, if VAR didn't exist. 
that that would have counted every day, you know, every day of the week. Uh, right. But because it, it put it into question, then there was the the, the a bit, bit more of that concern. But there there wasn't a great camera angle. The ball was the the ball the, the camera was on Rooney, where and the ball was too far away to and the linesman. This like it's I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. I I didn't think I think it was at the very least questionable, and I'm fine with the goal call uh, goal uh, counting and stuff like that. Yeah. And the moment was incredible. How insane was that Lucho Costa jumped into uh, the, the, the supporter crowd. section? How do you feel? It's just like... It, giving himself a hat trick at that moment. I mean, it was just... A, it was a wonderful moment. Yeah, it if was. If you're a fan of DC, that was a great moment for you. If you're a fan who paid the five bucks extra to sit in the front row, well, you got a gift, huh? <laughs> Lucho Costa just throwing a sweaty crouch right at your face. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, Which only happens to a select few after the game, so you should consider yourself lucky. The, the other thing that happened after, after that was there were um, reports. This is from Stephen Goff uh, from Soccer in, uh, at Soccer Insider. He was, writes for the Washington Post. Um, and he mentioned that after the game, there was a fight in the locker room between Orlando City players. Yeah, and we're hearing that Dom Dwyer tried to keep the peace, which... From what we heard of Don Dwyer, that seems to be a new re- re- okay. revelation about All right. his character. Sydney has an effect on you, I see. There you go. <laughs> you Sydney's... have to keep her and Cassius away from yeah. each other <laughs> yeah. when, they, when they fight. Unclear who the <laughs> primary combatants were, but shouting continued for a bit. Hey. Jason Christ was just be sitting there doing the whole tent thing, tapping his <laughs> fingers, hand tent. Like, I, you know, this is just, I, this is this, I, you know, can... Can they be relegated? Yeah. <laughs> Beckham's like, I can't get a stadium, but this can happen. Uh, re- yeah, really strange, man. It's a bummer. Uh, I mean, th- their head coach, uh, they have the new, th- their new head coach, James O'Connor, who came over from Louisville, if I'm not mistaken, Louisville City. Yeah. And uh, who has a pass with them, right? He won with them in uh, USL. Yeah. Okay, I didn't even know that, but okay. So the the on- the only thing is, it's just like he- he's an Irish guy, and seeing him at interviews uh he just seems like like i don't know like it, like he like he he's just he, i feel bad for him like he's just in he he's just he got hired to be the coach at the wrong time you know what so I mean? he's like pupils are really dilated he's, <laughs> he's just, just like, like oh, I didn't know. oh shit <laughs> i'm trying my best here but these guys are crazy you know uh, so maybe maybe He's this like, is what if I just call ma- someone the N word? You know, get out of here. <laughs> maybe this is one of those things where like uh, like we, we hear with uh, you know Unai Emery where people are like uh, he needs a couple transfer windows to really you know fix everything. <laughs> maybe that's what James needs just to get get rid of some. I bet you he wished the offseason would start right now. Because <laughs> this is uh, uh, I feel bad feel the feels for Orlando City, but man, were they better off with or without Christ? They were uh, no. They, it, it doesn't matter. They, they were bad. They, they, something's wrong fundamentally with the team, and I think it, it, it's a it's a chemistry issue. I think the players maybe don't really get along. Uh, hard to tell, uh, but something's. You, you can see the frustration between e- even when they're fighting each other. Even I mean. when Dom Dwyer scored scored that goal, uh, which was great. The chip uh, PC oh, oh, went over and celebrated with him. It, it's a but he he, he wasn't like ecstatic he was like just kind of smiling and smirking like i look you saw what i just did yeah like why don't you why don't you guys step give me up, some better stuff step your game up yeah. right it, 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 there isn't this like we did it it was like i did it and right. and, and that's not to, uh, suggesting there's any arrogance coming from dom dwyer i just think it's like he's being a leader and right. saying like yo man this is this is the kind of this is the level we need to be at yeah and y'all need to get there also i mean no one's happier than justin miram Oh yeah, just remember he's oh, out. No. Also gone. Yeah, yeah. He's out. He got out. <laughs> Yo, every- Shawshank. He got out. <laughs> this is. I didn't. I didn't tweet it because I thought it was a little too mean. There's this picture of Sasha Kleschen. So Orlando City did a thing with Disney, right? Uh, and there's a there's a picture of them like you know, you, you remember the movie Fant- Fantasia where uh, where Mickey had the, those balls that they were like they, they those like. Orbs or whatever, snow globe kind of thing. So, sort of, uh, whatever. But they're they're like these little balls, and they have stars on them, or whatever. So they they oddly look like Dragon Balls from the, the from the from the show Dragon Ball Z. Uh, and they, they was... I'm, I'm gonna read a book while you talk about this. <laughs> no, but they, they, I I wanted to tweet it, but honestly, I didn't do it because I just it just felt a little too mean. Uh, and I and it was Sasha Kleschen kicking one of these balls that looked like a Dragon Ball. And in Dragon Ball Z, when you collect all the Dragon Balls, you get to make a wish. Okay. Uh, and you can get whatever you want. 
So, and that was like the, the joke was like, uh, all Sasha questions, once he kicks all the Dragon Balls, he gets to, his wish will be to untrade himself from Orlando City, which, yeah. <laughs> which I, which is like silly, but silly, that doesn't seem mean at all. But it just, I felt like when you, when I'm saying it now, it doesn't seem mean, but like on Twitter, like you're just like, oh, you just hate Orlando City. Right. And I was like, no, nah, man, it's just, it's just really bad. And probably everybody wants to get out yeah, of it. Yeah, I'm sure everybody wants to leave. <laughs> and it just sucks because it's, it's like the, one of the hottest markets in soccer. Yeah, the fan base the, is, keeps showing up. Keep showing up, angry at their team, but as they, they should be. <laughs> but they keep showing up, so it's very weird compared to Columbus, which has, uh, you know, they they, they have tr- trouble getting fans. Obviously, they have a bigger issue, but uh, uh, Houston, uh, FC Dallas, ha- have trouble getting fans to the stadiums, uh, and and but Orlando full every damn game, uh, and and th- these are the the results that they get. Yeah. <laughs> So rough, rough. Uh, so uh, a couple, two quick things uh, before we get uh, to our guest interview. Uh, Christian Roldan was uh, p- after the game against FC Dallas. Yep. Uh, they won this game, uh, I believe, two to one, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and the uh, there was the fun the fun moment from this was that Christian they Rold- did win two to one. Did, Christian Roldan was uh, doing an interview, and we know he loves pizza and donuts. I don't know how he's how he's as fit as he is. Yeah. It's very fun. <laughs> to the rest of us, but he uh, he, he did an interview with uh, a slice behind his back. A slice behind his back for about about ten f- to fifteen minutes. He just yeah. held a slice of pizza behind his back. Very professional. Didn't want to, any, everyone to see. We've all been there before. <laughs> uh, I mean, you, there's most podcasts. Uh, Alexis yeah. is holding pizza behind his back, um, and my hands are in full view, <laughs> so you can only imagine where I'm keeping it. Uh, but yeah, look, it's trash pizza he's eating. Oh, he yeah. needs to fold it. Okay, well, I, I get that it's trash pizza because I don't expect uh, Seattle pizza to be. Seattle has some good pizza places. This in particular was a trash slice. It looked like some type of chain. Yeah, yeah. So it, okay, yeah, oh yeah. I, I don't know where the the uh, where the slice came from necessarily, but it was it was interesting to see that as soon. It looked it, like a Papa John's or something. It was ugh. You know what? But I feel like it's not conclusive where the pizza was from. I can tell you it was a chain, <laughs> and if it's not. Burn that place to the ground. What are they doing? <laughs> You're making a Papa John's looking slice? Ugh. How dare you? Uh, but that was pretty funny. Uh, Shouts to Seattle for uh, four wins in a row. Yeah, yeah. Seattle they did. actually have what? They've uh, unbeaten in the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Wow, good for them. They're doing pretty good. Uh, and there was some controversy uh, at the end of that game. Because Ru- Rui Diaz headbutted. Headbutted. And, and Reto Ziegler uh, did uh, retaliate a little bit. Give him a little karate chop to the neck. Not only did he do that, but then he pushed two of the refs. So my dude's going to be missing some games. Yeah, I, look, I, I initially... The ref looked down and his shoulder like, did you just touch me, my guy? <laughs> I thought it was... They, they went to video review, and I thought it might be... Over, uh, oh, the red card might be overturned. Uh, and then I was like, oh, how come they're sticking with the red card? I think they're both going to get it. They didn't show in, in the live uh, broadcast, because I did uh, uh, tweet out from uh, from the Cooligans that, that I thought that it would be rescinded. But in the in, during the game, the actual game, they didn't really show those replays. They didn't show those replays of him putting his hands on the... On the player and stuff like that. So yeah, they also like the highlights. On the, on the also, didn't show. Uh, well, actually, they did. They did show the uh, the kick that uh, Josie Altidore did at the NYCFC game. Yes, kicking Cayennes. Yeah, that looks was like it. his temper's boiling over. Dumb. <laughs> I don't know. Send what. him to Orlando. He'll fit right in. I don't know that what, what what they were thinking. Uh, I don't know why he was thinking doing that. Uh, but that was a good game. NYCFC against Toronto. Yeah. Uh, that was the it, after they they were down. Uh, da- Toronto was down a man and still managed to tie the game twice. So frustrating for NYCFC fans. But uh, Ishmael Tajiri Shradi, the law firm himself, uh, taking things into his own hands. He's like, Gunning. Your Honor, closing statement. Yeah. All right, bang hold this on. one off the post. <laughs> hold on a second. Let me rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> because holy smokes, yeah. I, he, he's. Uh, it's so strange. Like, th- th- there's some games that I wouldn't say that he is. Invisible? He, no, he's not hot. He gets hot and cold. It seems like he has moments. But even when he's cold, he's still a part of the game. Yes. He's still helping draw defenders out. He just has this he's innate a- ability to score, like, two at a time. Yeah. And, uh, the- like Barco. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the scene. Damn. The time. Time. <laughs> I got two phones, one for my girl and one for your girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was saying drugs. Okay. No, 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 no. no plug, no load. <laughs> Just one for my girl, one for your girl. <laughs> Neither one of them could read each other's text. <laughs> so, um, 
so yeah. So the other issue, uh, yeah. So that was, but that was an inter- entertaining game, and 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 you know, he they, they did win late. Uh, the last thing, uh, which we real we, quick, because we got to get to our interview. But real quick, the Austin C- City Hall live stream. You watched this, which I did watch last week, and uh, we were supposed to find out if Austin was going to get a stadium that Columbus, w- the Columbus crew, would be moving to. Delayed, delayed, and postponed because of horrible lawyers. Yeah, uh, just uh, this no one g- knows anything about soccer. I, th- I think his name is Robert Suttle. Uh, yeah. I think he's the guy representing uh, uh, pre court industries. Not so. the name you want, <laughs> Suttle. <laughs> Shouts to her. I don't know how Columbus did this. You managed to get pre court a terrible lawyer. <laughs> Shouts to you guys. But they, uh, they. I was, so I was watching this live stream, and I've never. I don't think I've ever watched the this a live stream like this. I've, uh, the OJ case was the last one. <laughs> of like I watched well, a. Th- this is not, this is not even a case. This is just a city council meeting. Yeah. And I thought. Like I, I caught it maybe an hour after, and I'm like, oh, I probably missed all the good stuff. I did not. Yeah, this was yeah. wildly entertaining. What happened in the first hour? <laughs> <laughs> because there was so much stupidity. My so- favorite was the dude with the ponytail just give flipping give the, the bird. Giving the flipping the bird. Uh, it's just Anytime like- pre was up. And I also love the... The the oh the, the there were a lot of questions of like how how would this benefit the women's team the women's soccer and girls soccer in the community and the lawyer said oh uh, you know they play too there'll be a lot of opportunities for kids to get on the pitch because they can go on as mascots during the game they they can step walk onto the field with the players that was his reasoning for the kids getting field access. Uh, I, and that's yeah. how he was trying to convince you help one the, of the kids. We'll let them hold the hands <laughs> of the players for a few minutes. <laughs> it was insane. So uh, today, when the, this podcast comes out, as you're listening to this, the, the Austin, the, the the next meeting for the Austin City Council, right. uh, is, will be taking place. Will be taking place. So we don't know what the result is. So you'll know about but it. But follow. Go, make sure you check out our Twitter because uh, we'll be live streaming that again because it'll just it'll be another ridiculous thing. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's get to our interview. With Ethan White. Ethan White is here. Uh, we're super excited. Uh, you know, he played for NYCFC, played for Philadelphia Union. Uh, d- great dude. Uh, f- doing doing the phot- photography thing right now. Yeah. Uh, so we'll get to our interview right after this. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to The Cooligans. We have a word from one of our sponsors, Mac Weldon. Oh, uh, Mac Weldon's back. Oh, when we're not around to hug you right downstairs, use Mac Weldon. Yes, and that's why. I, and we, you know what? We apologize for not being around. To, we can't get to everybody. <laughs> we've been right? trying. Honestly, we've, we've already hugged about 40,000 people down there. Down there. Uh, there's a lot left. Mac Weldon will handle it way better than we can. Uh, they're made of really cool material. I'm actually wearing them right now. Mac Weldon is, makes some of the best underwear I've ever worn in my life. I it's mean, the greatest underwear I've ever had in my entire life. It, and I know what you right now you guys are like, I like listening to this soccer comedy podcast, but what's Alexis wearing downstairs and is he happy with it? The answer is, it's Mac Weldon and yeah. yeah. It does, yeah. So, you know what? I was concerned. Thank you for yeah. answering that. I know, right? Off, off mic, we usually <laughs> ask each other, how you doing down there? But right now, I can just talk about it on the air, which I love. Uh, but they are super comfortable. They they look good and they, they have, they have like, that cool material that doesn't smell right. Remember yeah, it's, that? Like, it's a fabric that uh, doesn't pick up any odor. Modal and silver is in it. You can get a couple different kinds. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember uh, a while ago. I wore it for three days straight without showering. I had to test it. All right, your boy's serious <laughs> you, about you. You got to make sure. Threw it in the wife's face, <laughs> and she was like, "What are these?" And I go, "Are they clean or not?" And she's like, "They smell fine." They smell fine. We I told it. you, y'all, I wore those for three days. Those are the shorts that aren't supposed Honey, to smell. Honey, I'm disrespecting yeah, you, yeah. but it's an experiment. This is terrible, <laughs> but it's for the show. And she goes, oh, wow, normally I can smell your balls right away in your underwear. So this is a good thing. This is a good thing. So make That's sure. That's approved by D. <laughs> so as you make make sure, you go to MacWeldon.com and use the promo code COOLIGANS, uh, and you will receive uh, 20% off. Though. 20% off. And they got this try-on guarantee. If you throw these joints on and they don't fit right, you get to keep them. Please don't send them back. All right? <laughs> They're going to send you a new oh, pair. Don't send them to us. No. You know what? Send them to us. We'll put them up on, somewhere on the wall. Send us your dirty underwear. Please don't do that. We're never giving you the address. Ma- MacWeldon.com and use the promo code Coolians. Thank you so much for listening to the show. We got another word from another one of our sponsors, Seeky. Seeky crushing it as oh. per usual. 
Uh, SeatGeek, the official ticketing partner for Major League Soccer, but not only that. It's, it's, they it's got a, everything. They got concerts. concerts. They got a bunch of stuff. Everything. Anything Yo, you want to go you to. Just get the app. The app knows where you are. Everything. Your phone already is listening to you, all right? <laughs> the app also happens to know where you are. You want to go to a show around there? You hit that button. It's going to find you. Check this out. They're going to look at all the other ticket sites and find you the best deal. That's so right. why would you go anywhere else? Download that app and do that. And guess what? If you've never used it before, all you got to do is put in Cooligans, and they're going to give you $20. 20 bucks off. It's so easy to use. I use it all the time. Anytime I need to get tickets, like to NYCFC games, occasionally I'll pick and get tickets for some yeah. of my friends. Uh, I, I, we used it for the CONCACAF Champions League. Right, when wifey wants to come to a game, right? I only got one season ticket. I hit up SeatGeek. Boom. Done. Okay. And the first time I used it, $20 20 off. bucks off. So make sure you download the SeatGeek app. Use the promo code COOLIGANS. 20 bucks off your first order. Ah, thank you so much for coming back! Yes, let's go. Uh, we, are ah. <laughs> we are here. If you're watching on YouTube, you already see the guest. He's right here. <laughs> yo, yo, so yo. It's not, not going to be much of a surprise. But no, no we are here uh, with Ethan White. Uh, Ethan White. Come on, you remember him from NYCFC. You remember from uh, Columbus. No, uh, he didn't play at Columbus. Phil mm -hmm. Philadelphia and D.C. D.C., DC yeah. that's yeah. the team I was thinking in my head. Uh, come on, great defender, had moments. Come on, he should have probably played up front. I think the boy can score. Uh, you know he moves himself up when he plays FIFA, right? Uh, the dude's doing so many amazing things. You've seen amazing photos. Uh, you did the photo for the uh, Mitchell and Ness NYCFC sort of uh -huh. uh, collab. So many cool things. Ladies and gentlemen, let's just try and put your hands together for Ethan White. Ethan White, thanks Appreciate so much for being it. on the show, man. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, we met you. Uh, I, was that the first time we met you at the Mitchell and Ness thing? I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think Upper it was. A, I think it was ever ninety. Okay. Yeah, so official I, event. And, and we and you, thank you. We did like uh, we filmed some videos and we. I think we did a. Um, what did we do? We did like a game with. Uh, yeah, oh, well, would the, you rather? Would you yeah, rather? Yeah, that yeah. Was a, that yeah. Was a, that yeah was I think was one of the questions was like, would you rather win MLS Cup or win Concacaf Champions League or something like that? And yeah. what did I say? I, I don't remember. I asked you also, uh, what do you think you're better at? Better photographer, better defender? And you were like, come on, man. <laughs> I was tight, yeah. Was you gave me the like, come on, why would you do that? I was like, it's not a it's not a win win. It's a lose lose yeah, yeah. situation. There's no way to answer that, which is why we asked you. Our favorite thing is like, all right, so you got the league now, so you can uh, say whatever the fuck you want. But yeah. um, can I actually just hear you curse once? Shit, that's good. Cool. <laughs> Shit's allowed on TV, but we'll let it go. So, oh, it is? I thought yeah, you yeah. shit on TV. No, nah, shit, you can oh, say it on cable. Like that. Yeah, there it is. Bang, bang, bang. All right. Uh, <laughs> the gulliest ex player right now. <laughs> so, one of the things we love to do when it comes to players is that you guys are like, you're held to such a, a, a high degree of like um, of like overview when it when it comes to what you guys say. Mm -hmm. So like we like to try to like just shake you guys up a little bit right, right. to try to get well, the personalities. Out. Nothing crazy. I mean, he he does. I mean, you know. Yeah. Okay. What I like <laughs> to do. <laughs> no, I, I mean, don't want to fuck up anybody's money, but like <laughs> I I like to be like, let's ask you a question you normally yeah. don't get. Yeah, yeah. Because. One of the reasons we like doing interviews because everyone's like asking the same seven right, questions. Right. So I feel like players tend to have fun with us when they're on. Is that harder or easier for you guys? Do you like those moments or you're like, God, I'm going to hear about this later? Uh, I mean, I think it depends on the player. Yeah. There's players that are like constantly media trained on like, and then there's players that just don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, we have a few I feel like, I feel like the MLS, I hope the MLS gets to a point where they can just act like the NFL and NBA players, they just say whatever they want because they're going to get paid, whatever, and then is it maybe, they're going to play their game. Is it maybe because, uh, like, one thing we find that's interesting when, whenever we interview any players mm -hmm. is uh, the, the players, soccer players are young. They're kids. I mean, it's children that right. we're putting on this, like, professional standard of, of, of how an athlete should be. So they yeah. tend to be a little bit, like, way more cautious. Maybe it's like you can scare a kid to, like, you know, be more media trained right. early on. And then when we meet guys a little bit older, maybe 25 and above, then it's like, then their personalities start uh, to come out. Yeah, they're like, I'm already established, so right. go well, ahead. Well, you got to think, like, there's no way to prepare for this, really, yeah. uh, as a soccer player. Like, we don't go through, like, training with the agent to, like, have media, stuff like that. Like, those guys at the Combine are, like, training for interviews. Wow, okay. The soccer players are just drafted, and they're, they have one good game, and there's microphones in your face. Oh, that's interesting. God, yeah, I'd be at the league. Because well, you know what I mean? Like, like if you're the number one draft pick coming out of college and in the NFL, you're going to have interviews and interviews, ESPN. You're going to like basically a tour before you get drafted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. MLS, you just kind of get thrown into the fire. Like, <laughs> oh, you just scored a goal in your debut. How's it going? And you're like, yo, this is my first ever interview. Yeah. You're like, duh, duh. <laughs> right. I'm so the I, greatest so ever. I, so I, <laughs> exactly. That's how I would have gotten I think that. I'm the next Messi. Yeah. I mean, Can uh, we get some better players around me? <laughs> Right. Yeah, I mean, I got so many more interviews right now. Right. So, like, for us, I think, I think soccer players, like, in this country at least, they, like, the, the, 
the microphone in your face celebrity kind of thing is kind of new to the beginning. Okay, that's interesting. Because, like, Baker Mayfield was a celebrity before he even... And, yeah. yeah. Like, a year or two before he, he went He was there. a celebrity for the wrong reasons. Yeah, uh, you exactly. Know, getting tackled by a cop. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. But you see what I'm saying, though? But it made the headlines. Exactly. And sometimes so he, that's what soccer needs. He was, like, a known name and had, like, his own, like, little following or personality before he even stepped into in front of microphones. Okay. So uh, w- that, that says a lot about, like, and that's definitely the American soccer player, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, in other yeah. countries, it's very, it is very different. Uh, what, uh, is, is that something that through your time uh, in the league, uh, you've seen, like, change? Or have you seen, like, younger players come into, like, a more... I, obviously, from where MLS was when you got mm-hmm. into now, uh, in just a couple oh, years, huge, yes, leaves a balance. huge difference. Yeah, yeah. So, what what do you think is like the how 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 are younger players introduced to the league now than than they were when you were in the when you got in? Oh, that's hard for me. I don't know if I can answer that. It's so different than when I was when I came in the league. Because um, I know we've spoken to people that that were playing in like the late '90s, and it's like mm. you know we. There were only three cups of water for the entire yeah. team. You know? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> we were all changing in one guy's trunk because he could afford a car. Yeah, when I was in DC, I would, the stories I would hear, like just because the guys were older. Yeah, and yeah. I was only I was I would train with them when I was like 17 years old. Um, the stories that would I would hear were crazy. Yeah, Nothing we, like we would ever deal with. And I'm like, <laughs> you guys got it good. Yeah. And I'm like, now I'm looking at like the new training facilities. I go to, I went to like down in Atlanta, I saw their training facility. Oh like, you guys God. got it good. Like, <laughs> yeah. So it's just, just how quickly it's changed from it's then a, is It's so crazy. funny because like, there's some guys that are like, back in my day, whatever. Yeah. But, and these right. guys are like 24. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Oh, you should have seen how it was back then. Yeah. <laughs> right. Something wrong with your voice, though? <laughs> that's what, that's what you I feel. You graduated college that's four years ago. <laughs> exactly. That's what I feel, too. Now, how, all right. So you were in Atlanta for All Star, right? Mm-hmm. Watching and going to see what's happening there, we talk about it a lot from a fan perspective. How seventy-two thousand is insanity, right? And how we all thought Atlanta was a terrible sports culture. I mean, they were. Mm. This has proven us all wrong because they changed that. But from a player perspective, some of the things that are the the, the field, the the stadium, the the practice facilities, the training facilities. How does how much of an advancement is over what you had to deal with in the past? Is it like is this a whole new world? Uh, depending on what age and what point. When I was younger, we didn't have, like, we still trained on turf fields. We yeah. had one turf field at DC United that was garbage. You could have got hurt any minute. <laughs> um, and then there was, like, the first team field, and that was it. Yeah. Then, but now the kids are, like, I mean, when I was in Philadelphia Union, the kids were from all over, and they had, like, a place to stay. They had to go into a boarding school. They had this, they had that. So, oh, like, YSA, right? Or, yeah, 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 yeah. And then now NYC, FC is, like, planning the do stuff as well. You, then yeah. you see Atlanta's, and it's like, this is crazy. They have seven fields. They don't have to train on the same field one at all, ever. Yeah, They yeah. can just keep rotating <laughs> throughout the week and just... That's wild. Jim is right there. It's just like, so... I mean, it's just completely different than what I, what I experienced. Well, you're out of the league now, right? Mm-hmm. Was it a, Was it a choice you made? Did you have suitors? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, for me, I made the decision... I realized that, like, I've been doing things for... To prove something to myself, and I feel like I got to the point where I didn't have to prove anything to myself anymore. Okay. Um, and I realized that in this business, like most businesses, people don't really care about you. They just get what they can about you, can out of you, and then move on. Um, You're a commodity. To so I feel like I kind of took it into my control. I was like, I'm going to live my life. I've, I got sick of like missing out on opportunities, and like, I want to go to Coachella. I want to like do all this stuff before I turn 37 and have kids, yeah. and like I can't, you know, what I mean, retire. And I'm like, now what? So like I'm now 27. You I'm young enough to like. You want to go to coach out? You want to be a basic bitch? This no, is why you no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying there's, there's opportunities I missed. Like, there's things I want to do. Like, I want to have, like, a regular weekend one time. I want to go out with the boys. I want to be able to do, like, Yo, I, all photography I hear is, stuff. All I hear is Ethan wants to do drugs. Yeah. <laughs> no, hell no, hell no. Wants to burn that herb? Anyway, no. <laughs> no, I'm but just saying I, I, want to, I want to be able to enjoy, like, be able to travel. Like, no, no, so, of course, yeah. Like, yeah. I want to be able to, like, just do stuff that I wouldn't be able to do as a professional uh, soccer player. And I feel like I got what I wanted. A soccer brought put like a new period, like a new perspective on life that I didn't, wouldn't have gotten. Right. When, if I didn't play at all. Anything you regret? Sorry, I'm stepping over your question. Yeah. But anything you regret about your time in the league? Anything you wish you would have done over, or an opportunity you wish you would have taken? Uh, no. Nothing. I mean, obviously, I wish I had won more trophies. I wish like all <laughs> that, but I can't say like I, I don't. I don't try to live with regrets. Uh, I don't. I I, I, I don't guess... regret. I'm actually actually really. 
every day there's something that tells me like yeah, it's a good decision that you walked away. All right. Okay. Yeah, because it, it is like uh, being with us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is an no, but even this, even this is like different experience that I wouldn't have gotten while playing. Yeah, that's okay. true. Like being able to talk to you guys with just openly being able to say whatever the fuck I want. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. we, uh, we I, and I'm young enough to realize, like, well, yeah, but this is just because <laughs> yeah. last year I remember uh, watching because uh, NYCFC didn't do too many like send their players out to do too much like mm -hmm. publicity or media stuff, but uh, especially to like inner city like hot 90 you did a hot 97 interview with yeah, ronnie yeah. wallace and that was like well, I, when we saw it we were like yo ethan and ronnie on it like like and that, it's just like a cool thing right and and at the very least it was like oh cool we got to see kind of a different side but you it, it wasn't like yo we out here hot 97 yeah, was good right, right, right. What right, up, right. Bro? <laughs> like you weren't you know what i mean you didn't right. you go because you can't really do that right, right? exactly like there was yeah there was a lot more I would have said in that interview. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Yo, Ebro, you gotta shut up. Yeah. Y'all crazy shit you be nah. saying. Yeah, I know. I did. Yo, these I did. These days I, did trash. I did say something where I walked out and I was like, oh, snap. Yeah? Like, Rodney yo. and I were like, yo, I, yo, I, I, I just, was gonna... I just <laughs> this little pump. Did you? I oh, this right, little right, pump right, like yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, you didn't like and that. I was like, yo, the little pump's gonna come at my neck. Yeah. <laughs> Like this is taking shots at Cubans. Player. And I'm like, then we taking like, shots at Cubans. I'm like, I'm like yo, it's little pump. Like, I got it. I got it now. Rep for little pump. Right, well, yeah, right. Nah, but if little pump is watching MLS, I'm like, yo, it's, it's all good, man. Right, word. If you want to come fans. through to a game yeah. or something? Yo, in fact, we're gonna beat them up as soon as the cameras are off. Little pump, you won't see any marks on them, but just believe that happened. So uh, let's talk about uh, your time at NYCFC. Mm -hmm. We we that's where we watched you uh, a bunch. You did great there. Uh, what do you think of? Vieira, especially now Vieira leaving, mm -hmm. th that whole situation. What was, uh, you know, being under the tutelage of Patrick Vieira, what was that like for you? For me, it was amazing. I'm an Arsenal fan. I grew up. He was one of my favorite players on the okay. team. Like, that was just <laughs> crazy. I remember the first day I walked in, and he, like, introduced himself. And I was like, yo, this is Patrick Vieira. It was like, yo, dog, I so know you. Like, this dude is big as shit, yeah. <laughs> yo. When I, we met him at the, one of those, they used to do, what was it called, soccer in the city or something like that? Burroughs? The Burroughs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Soccer yeah. in the Burroughs. Yeah. Uh, city so, in the Burroughs. Yeah, city That's in the Burroughs. Mm -hmm. And uh, was it Mark Ferrado hit us up like, yo, you got to come through, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. We weren't going to go, but we're like, all right, we'll come through. And uh, Patrick Vieira was there. And I was like, oh, shit. So he answered a couple questions. I asked a couple questions. And then at the end, he stands up. At a, we're like, oh, my God. He just kept going. He yeah. just kept going. I'm like, well, how many knees does this guy have? <laughs> right, exactly. You know, like two per leg. And then I, got, I walked up to him, and I, there's this thing where I'm like, all right, I'm not going to fanboy, all right, because I've now spoken, right. like, kind of to him. So I just walked up to him. I go, Arsene Wenger in or out? And he goes, oh, uh, but who do you replace him with? I was like, ooh, he said out. <laughs> I was like, ooh. We were all just excited. Yeah. We were like, ah. He set out like right. he's a legend. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and uh, being tr coached by him, I know we could talk about Alexis meeting him. Yeah. Either thank day. you for coming to this interview <laughs> with me. <laughs> like, Jesus. <laughs> it was, so it was uh, exciting. Like how? Because did I, you learn anything? Yeah. Because I also, yeah yeah yeah. We've I also a lot. heard he's he can be he brought that European mentality of how soccer players should uh, think of themselves as professionals. Right. And we do know he like he would suspend. People for yeah, like Mikey and Kyrie, just like I, got, I'm, I, I, he made me miss a game too. Okay, I was, I was supposed to play in a game and what, I, I was really? late. What'd you yeah, do? I, I was late. Okay, you were late because I tried. It was a midweek game. I tried to be smart and take a cab early, but the traffic was terrible. Oh man! Then I tried to hop on the train, and the tr and the the four of the five wasn't going past one twenty fifth. Yeah. So I was like, shit. Yeah, this is so crazy. This is like re this is like a real problem. And yeah, I was, but, but, the, but the thing is, I knew I was gonna be late. While I was on the train, but I couldn't get off the train because it was just the tunnels were packed. So I was yeah, just stuck yeah. in between stops. So you just know looking you're not at the clock. Play. So as soon as I got as soon as I got off the train, I texted the team administrator and I was like, "Yo, tell Pat I'm running late." And this is like 20 minutes already. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is already like 20 minutes before I have to be there. But I know I know New York. I'm like, "Yo, I'm yeah. gonna be late." And there's no way I make it. Traffic's terrible. I got out of a cab to get on the train. Unless the Uber helicopter shows up. <laughs> I was, and yeah, you know I don't got a budget for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then I was like, yo, I might be late. So I ended up being like five minutes late, and he was like, you're out. This is, and this and is I, for a I, game. This is, like this a, is a game. This is a game. This yeah. is a game. If a game Last were, year. Yeah, yeah. If a game were to start at 1 p.m., what, what time do you have to be there? Uh, we had to be there 90 minutes before the game. Oof. Okay. No, no, two hours. And then we have a meeting. Yeah, yeah. And then we have to be there. So you have to make, you have to make sure you make the meeting. Damn. Five minutes And I walked late. in, and they were already in the meeting. Yeah. Ever, did everyone else like that? So he was, like, up in the stands. I was like, but I just, I mean, I told you him You didn't even story. get in the 18. No, no. no wow. No. Don't even dress. No, it was me and another player. Um, 
You won't put them on blast. But no, I, I'm, yeah, I'm <laughs> but do, is that the person behind you? Are they like, yes, I get to play? No, nah, I mean, I, maybe. Yeah. I was one of those guys. I knew, like, I'm part of a team. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm like, late, that's on me. And then I just got to deal with it, and hopefully my team can come through. That's the kind of guy I was, I feel like, towards in my steep state, period. Damn. I must stay at there. I was like, I'm just going to do this for the team. All right. That's pretty cool. All right. Well, look, that's why I have no, like, hard. That's why you walk away, like, cool. I walk away, I like, I did. I, I did my thing. I played. A, and another thing was, I, I made 100 games. That's pretty dope. I played 100 games in the league, and I was like, you know what? <laughs> this is another. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is, I got what I want from it. I'm not, I can walk away from a club that I still respect. I don't hate anybody. I had, still had offers on the table. I was in Norway, like, right before in May, getting contract offers, and I, I was on the team, and they were like, Sign you this, and I was like, "Nah, I'm, I'm actually good. I'm gonna take these opportunities at home." Well, that's the thing. What are these opportunities? Because you're doing so many different things. As a mm -hmm. player, we want players to be a player, and then when they retire, we want them to do some media stuff, and that's it. Right. You have other aspirations. You're you're doing a travel show kind of a thing, right? Yeah, I did. It's, that was over now. Yeah, that's over now. All right. Yeah. What but, was that? I because I don't know about it. So like, I, I did or something, right? Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels. I knew. So it was I did a, this I show like with Jack Daniels where I traveled to like six different cities, um, and basically just talked to creatives. Like a chef, fashion designer in New York, um, this art collective in Detroit, gamer in this, um, <laughs> com co what's the costume thing called? Cosplay? Uh, cosplay. Cosplay, yeah, cosplay person in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> what'd, what'd you interview him? His mother's bro, face. You gotta, <laughs> it's crazy. You got to see the episode. <laughs> yeah. It was cool. It was actually, I was like, yo, I got to respect for these people. Yeah. Um, and then it was one more. One more. What was it? But oh, that, I went. I went to the distillery in uh, in Tennessee. So I traveled to six different cities. Is that part of your plan, cities. though? Is this is this what what do you want to do? What is your goal now that you're not a player? How do you want people instead of Ethan White, the retired soccer player? What do you want people to say, Ethan White? The I don't want to be put into anything, really. Really? Just Ethan nah. White, the homie. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. I mean, for real, like I want to be able to just be myself. Like if I like to do photography. But what is yourself? What do you want to do? Like, where do you see yourself in five years? And don't say I don't know. <laughs> no, nah, I just want to say I, I want to just be say happy. I just want to be su enjoy and be successful, be able to do what I live a lifestyle that I'm that I'm happy Ethan living. Ethan White's gonna be. I, I don't need to be. I, for me, I'm not the kind of person that needs to be rich. Obviously, I would like it, but I just want to enjoy. It. I think life here is short, and I just want to enjoy it. I think your girls listening like, no, he want to be rich. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Like, like if we have kids, I want to be able to provide for our kids. Like right, I want right. to be able to do all that. But I don't. I mean, I don't need like a mansion in LA and all that. I just I just want to really just enjoy, look back and say I enjoyed my life. All right. Either way, it's gonna be just a mogul. Yo, you so like, be an I, like, I, like, I don't speaker. want, I don't, <laughs> I don't want, I don't want it to be like he's just a host or he's just a photographer, or he's just a content consultant or he yeah. just, he's, a, he does, he, he's yeah. an old athlete. Like, you know, what yeah. I mean, I want to be able to just be the, be my, like, who, wait, what does Pharrell do? Everything. Just stay young forever. He's a vampire. He's, he's Fifteen thousand like, dollars sneakers. Is, that's what he does. Pharrell is just Pharrell. Like yeah. he makes music. Yeah. Designs clothes. Like this is a new era now, where like you don't have to be the one thing. You know, like when I was a kid, if you were an actor and you tried to sing, you got shit on. Right. If you were a singer and you tried to act, you got shit on. Right. Right. But now, like that's every. Like, you could just do whatever it is you want. So I'll ask this: like now that you're going into like these other endeavors. Do you are you bringing soccer along with it? Are you trying to add like that a, a, a bit of a microscope to the American soccer player, or that's not really a priority? Yeah, well, I, just, I mean, American soccer player too, but I just athletes in general. Okay, I feel like athletes are uh, kind of put in a box where you're just an athlete, like. And what everyone thinks this is going to sound disrespectful, but everyone assumes players are dumb. I I don't understand why. They just assume like this is what you do, and you have no other skills yeah. besides like, this. Like I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of people were friends with the cool athlete in high school. Yeah, sure. What all of a sudden? When did he go dumb? Yeah. Well, that's just that's <laughs> American just... football player because they get him ahead a lot. Well, yeah. I mean, but... <laughs> obviously, obviously, there's special cases, but I'm yeah. sure there's also some football players on that were on that team that were super smart that went to like a good football school that's just yeah. a, good, a good college as well. Yeah. It, it, look, in, in general, I think the reason I think we're, that we're asking these questions and, and in this sort of way is because a lot of people find it brave and also shocking that a, a young athlete in the middle of his career mm. kind of just was like, I'm done with it. As opposed yeah. to, you know, the, the, we, we see this happen in the NFL a lot, right? right. A, a lot of younger players are like, you know what? I'm, I'm not it's not worth risking my brain mm. uh, for this game and, and for this money. But soccer is a, you, it's just not a common thing you see right. in, in yeah. soccer, and and you don't necessarily seem like a guy that's like uh, I'm I'm frustrated with how terrible this game is. I think it, it's just like a, a conscious choice of like 
you know, there's other things for me, and I don't want to miss out on them. Exactly. Yeah. So for me, it was just like, I'm in a good city. I'm enjoying myself. There's other opportunities, and there's other things I like to do. I'm just going to enjoy it while I'm young. We got music coming out. We got bars. <laughs> We we can we can do that. No, okay. no, no way, what? no way. Definitely not ever gonna get in front of a microphone. Look out, a little pump. That rap. Right. No that way. That rap, a little pump. <laughs> no, nah, that'll never happen. <laughs> Last thing, real quick. We were just in Richmond, uh, Virginia, for a show that we did, uh, mm-hmm. and we hung out with the Richmond Kickers. You played for the Richmond Kickers. For, yeah, yeah. You were on loan there for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, what was that time like? So that was two thousand. Wikipedia says 11? 2012. 2012. Yeah, yeah. So I got injured my end of my rookie year. Oh, no. And it was my knee. And I was out for like six, seven months. Damn. And now I went to the, down to Richmond to get games. Okay. And it was cool. It was cool. I still have boys that play for that team, like from college. Oh, nice. So yeah, yeah, we we did a show for like a lot of the Richmond Kicker supporters, and they were all where, uh, yeah, at, a, at, at the where were we at the Funny Bone at the Funny Bone in Richmond, Virginia. I don't know where that is. Yeah, you gotta come out. Come out to Neither a show, we. Ethan. Now you're in you're <laughs> yeah. in New York. Come see a comedy. Come show. see a comedy. show. I will. Yo, I want to come through. I feel we like I'm still funnier stuff. than you guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's I think that's one of the things Ethan's gonna be doing. We're gonna yeah. be seeing him on stage. Right, yeah. Doing exactly. Jokes. Exactly. We'll put you up for five. <laughs> oh no! no I okay, really, I really couldn't do that. love to see that. Uh, I watch. Uh, oh my bad. No, no, go for it. Go for it. I watch. Um, Coffee with comedians. You watch that? Oh God! Jimmy's the cars getting coffee. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it, that's it. That's sometimes, a sometimes show. I'm like the comedians just aren't just funny. Sometimes. You know what though? Wait, after you get paid, I mean, you know, are you kicking the ball around? It's like a like a plumber's house has leaks. You know what I mean? Like, right. Once you do it for a job, you kind of want to go home and not do it. Sometimes. I don't know. I just feel like. Some of the guys were just I don't I don't know I, feel, I don't want to diss anybody. You know what? It is? <laughs> yeah. There's a good only little pump. Yeah, gets there's it. a I good core. Of that one. Well, you can tell all the shit you want because we do it. Uh, there's a good core of comedians that write and repeat what they say, mm-hmm. and that's funny. And when off stage, they're deadpan. Right. Yeah. So it's very hard. They're not like the A personality like you find with us. You know what I mean? Like when we're out, we're like, oh, we could be comedic in conversation. Some of them are just like, you're what? sure you're a comic? Well, yeah. You say- but my thing is like, how did you get into <laughs> comedy then? Somebody like how did you know, you know you were funny? Be like, never, yo, I'm gonna get on the stage. They never got hit by their parents. Like there's some of those people who believe that they're good at everything they do. <laughs> you know, those people are just so supported their whole lives. That's like yeah, American. The opposite. It's like me. American Idol stuff. <laughs> it's the exact opposite. I, my mother been doing comedy for ten years. My mother still never seen me perform. Yeah. She really she refuses just, to. She, just puts she them lives down. in Newark. Like you talking about your mom? You talking about your mom? Of course I do. Oh okay. <laughs> I, I was gonna say you gotta talk about your mom. She doesn't come. Of course not. She puts herself. in I love you, mom. I'm not talking about you. I know he ain't talking to you, Daisy. Ethan White, thank you so much for being on the show, man. Where can people follow your career and everything you're doing? Um, what's next? So right now I'm working with uh, Adidas and the league as well. Um, that's why I was down in Atlanta. Um, so just you know, follow the Adidas NYC. Was it on your like, Instagram and, on your Twitter? I, mean, I I don't post that much of my work on stuff on on my uh, Twitter. You okay, work I, for I, other people, yeah. Yeah, I want to start doing it. Um, yeah, I we feel gotta like work there's on like that. a lot of stuff that I don't post. Like, <laughs> yeah. I am like actually enjoying this. Um, for a photographer, I feel like Instagram <laughs> maybe one of those things you might want to get into. Yeah, but I feel like then then there's then there's there's you don't want to get like stuck in a, a little wave of things. That's I don't wanna, true. I don't want to be like st- oh, like just doing it for the social media aspect. Well, not just that. But I'm saying I don't, I don't want to be looked at as a person that only does one style of things. Okay. Well, look, Ethan. I all I'm saying is just more selfies of you. Yeah. That's just, <laughs> no, I definitely. I don't do selfies. Yeah. I don't think there's one selfie Yo, on my let's page. Let's get Ethan a selfie stick. I don't know. Nah, whoa. Change the game. Yo, this is funny. My, his, his wife is a photographer. Yeah. Maybe yeah, there's an opportunity to collab on something huge or something okay. like that. Okay. Link cool. up. Yeah, yeah maybe great. we should. D shoots. D shoots. shoots. Check it out. She's Everybody great. check it out. She's amazing. Uh, all right, Ethan. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show, man. This is so Thanks, we're, homies. we're wrapping up the show. So we you saw you saw uh, do, us do our intro. We kind of y- y- yell the cooligans at the end. So we're gonna do that with you. Is that cool? Are we, are we yeah. doing it on account or are y'all just in sync? You'll uh, see. No, you'll, you'll get, see when, it'll make total sense when uh, when, when you'll we, you'll be. Trust me, you'll figure <laughs> right, it out. So this is uh, thank you again for listening to the show, everybody. Make sure you uh, like the podcast, subscribe, uh, everything. It's on YouTube as five well. Five stars. Five stars. Do it. Uh, What's five stars? On, it's on iTunes. iTunes. Ooh, also, I'm a five star general. Baby, uh, <laughs> got getting money. Gang, gang. So, uh, <laughs> got so <getting> money. <laughs> for for Ethan White, my name is Christian Polanco. My name is Alexis Guerrero. And together, what are we? The, the cool.